Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so um, this is the first of at least three examples um, where I'm going to show you how to use power series to solve a given differential equation. Um, the equation we have to solve here is this. And um, recall that our power series are a series of this form. So like power series that you're familiar with or should be familiar with um, are like the Taylor series or the Maclaurin series. And this here is a power series centered at x equals um, a. And so if we want to center it at x equals zero, then this would be um, the power series for um, a particular function y, in particular the Maclaurin series, right? Okay, okay. And, and so what we're saying is the solution y that we seek to solve our differential equation can be written in a uh, series form like this, right? And this obviously is in closed form. So if we write our solution y term by term, then it look like this. Um, so then y prime would look like this. And looking at y prime, perhaps now uh, it's a bit easier to figure out how to write y prime in closed form. And so y prime in closed form, um, that is using sigma notation, will look like this. By the way, if you need help on um, how sigma works, sigma notation that is, I have tons of videos on sigma notation, so you have to check those out. But yeah, um, y double prime is clearly this. And now that we've got y double prime and y handy, we're able to rewrite our given differential equation using series, and we write, um, our, we rewrite our given differential equation like this uh, because it says y double prime plus y equals zero. Okay, now we want to work with this and simplify it as much as possible so we can figure out how to make it equal to zero. Um, and so at the start, we need to fix the fact that this sigma starts at n equals 2 and this sigma starts at n equals 0. And the way we fix that is by pushing this forward so that this sigma here starts at n equals 0. Now, let's look at what the first term of this sigma is right now, right? Right now, if we uh, let n equal 2, then we see that the first term of uh, this sigma here would have to be 1 times 2 times a sub 2. So when we change this, so this sigma here so that it starts at n equals 0, we still need this to be the first term. And so if you do it a bit carefully, and this is not very hard to do, again, you could just learn from videos on sigma notation, but yeah, um, the way you push this forward is by rewriting what's inside of sigma here uh, in this form. That way, if you plug in n equals 0 into this, right, you still into this here, um, including um, x to the 0, Right? So if you plug in n equals 0 into this, you still get this uh, as being the first term. And, and so um, you know all of the terms of this sigma here are the same as this sigma here. So this is the correct rewriting of this so that um, we started n equals 0 instead of n equals 2. Now that uh, we've got both this sigma and this sigma, both of these sigmas, starting at n equals 0 and ending at infinity, we can uh, put them together. right? Um, and especially since we have an x to the n here and x to the n here that are um, common factors, we take advantage of all of that and put them together and write a single sigma, and this is what we'd have to write. You could carefully check that what I've written here is the same as um, what, what we've, we had had here. Yeah, okay, cool. Now, clearly looking at this, the way that uh, we can get this left side to equal zero is if we get what's multiplying this x to the n, that is, all of this stuff to equal zero. If we can get this stuff to equal zero, then we get zero times x to the n, and the sum from n equals zero to infinity doesn't matter, it still, still equals zero. So we need to get just this part to equal zero, right? Okay, cool. Um, all right, so then uh, doing exactly what I said, which is getting um, what's multiplying x to the n right here, getting that to equal zero, we get this. Now in this equation here, um, solving for a sub n plus two, uh, we see that a sub n plus 2 is related to um, a sub n, right, using this equation. We see that a sub n plus 2 in particular is equal to negative a sub n divided by n plus 1 um, times n plus 2. And all I did is just use simple, like, you know, algebra to solve for a sub n plus 2 uh, in this equation, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so now um, this uh, recursive definition that relates the coefficients of y is nice, but uh, not terribly helpful. So let's look at uh, a couple of um, a sub n's and see a few, not a couple, a, a few a sub n's and see if we could 
figure out the relationship between the coefficients uh, a bit more um, clearly. So uh, let's make some room, right? And this is what I'm saying we do. Um, let's uh, recall what the relationship was uh, that we just found between um, a sub n plus 2 and a sub n, which is this here, right? Now, let's plug in some values of n starting with n equals 0. So when n equals 0, we see that we can relate a sub 2 to um, a sub 0 uh, using this equation. In particular, we see that a sub 2 is equal to negative a sub 0 divided by 2 factorial. And then when n equals 1, we see that a sub 3 is equal to negative a sub 1 divided by 3 factorial. And then when n equals 2, we see that a sub 4 is equal to a sub 0 divided by 4 factorial. And um, when n equals 3, we see that a sub 5 is equal to a sub 1 divided by 5 factorial. Huh. We're starting to see what's happening here. All of um, the... Um, the uh, a sub n's corresponding to even n's, like a sub 2 and a sub 4, are related to a sub 0, and the denominators are just like 4 factorial and 2 factorial and so on. And then all of the odd ones, right, uh, all of the odd a sub n's are related to um, a sub 1, right? And again, the denominators are just like this number factorial, right? Like 5 factorial for a sub 5 and 3 factorial for a sub 3 and so on. Okay, so cool, cool, cool. So using this then, we can rewrite our solution y, right, um, to look like this. Now, um, there are obviously a bunch of terms, like an infinite amount of terms I have not written, right? Like, for example, the term involving um, x to the 6th and x to the 7th and so on. But um, I've intentionally um, highlighted in red uh, all of the terms involving um, even exponents of x, and then all of the terms involving odd exponents of x I've highlighted in blue, right? All the even, one, even ones in red and all the um, odd ones in blue. Now, if we can group all the even ones together and then all the odd ones together, um, then we'd have this, right? Okay, cool. And then if we factor out a sub 0 from all of the even ones and then um, factor out a sub 1 from all of the odd ones, what we'll have left will be a sub 0 times the cosine series and then plus a sub 1 times the sine series. So here's what I'm saying. Uh, by grouping all the even um, powers of x together and all the odd powers of x together, we could uh, rewrite after factoring a sub 0 out from the even ones and then factoring out a sub 1 from all the odd ones, we could write this, which is that our solution y is equal to a sub 0 times cos x plus a sub 1 times sine x. And if I uh, choose to replace a sub 0 with alpha and a sub 1 with beta, we can write our final solution is y equals um, alpha times cosine x plus beta times sine x. And of course, this is the most general solution because we know that like one um, solution, for example, is y equals cos x. Because uh, y double prime, if y equals cos x, y double prime would be negative cos x. So you get negative cos x plus cos x equals zero. Okay, so you see that y equals cos x alone is a solution. But so is y equals root 3 cos x uh, plus um, root 5 sine x. Anything of this form is a solution um, to this differential equation is what we just learned. Okay, and um, yeah, example two is next. And obviously in uh, examples two and three, I'm not going to go uh, through as much uh, detail and hand-holding, uh, but there'll be harder examples, and so um, there'll be newer details to talk about. All right, cool. Keep watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Take care.